The Ontological Argument The first ontological argument was proposed by Anselm of Canterbury in 1078 AD in his writings called Proslogion. In the Proslogion, Anselm wanted to show a very simple yet understandable explanation for the existence of God. He starts by defining who God is, then aims to show God as having a necessary existence. Anselm's argument in chapter 2 of the Proslogion can be summarized as follows. Our understanding of God is a being than which no greater can be conceived. The idea of God exists in the mind. A being which exists both in the mind and in reality is greater than a being that exists only in the mind. If God only exists in the mind, then we can conceive of a greater being, that which exists in reality. We cannot be imagining something that is greater than God, therefore God exists. In chapter 3 of his book, Anselm presented the notion of a being that cannot be conceived to not exist by saying the following. He argued that if something can be conceived to not exist, then something greater can be conceived. Consequently, a thing than which nothing greater can be conceived cannot be conceived to not exist, and so it must exist. Later in the early 20th century, uh, the famed mathematician Kurt Gödel provided a formal argument for God's existence with the same ontological argument. His arguments were constructed um, by Gödel himself, but not published until long after his death. He provided a logically valid argument based on modal logic. He uses the conception of properties, ultimately concluding with God's existence. Definition 1. X is godlike if and only if X has as essential properties those and only those properties which are positive. Definition 2. A is an essence of X and if and only if for every property B, X has B necessarily if and only if A entails B. Definition 3. X necessarily exists if and only if every essence of X is necessarily exemplified. This is how he begins the definition. And now we go into the axiom. In axiom 1, he says, if a property is positive, then its negation is not positive. Axiom 2. Any property entailed by, in other words, strictly implied by, a positive property is positive. Axiom 3. The property of being godlike is positive. Axiom 4. If a property is positive, then it is necessarily positive. Axiom 5. Necessary existence is positive. And Axiom 6. For any property P, if P is positive, then being necessarily P is positive. From this, these axioms, he drew the following theorems. Theorem 1. If a property is positive, then it is consistent. In other words, possibly exemplified. 
he drew this corollary from this corollary one the property of being godlike is consistent theorem two if something is godlike then the property of being godlike is an essence of that thing and finally theorem three necessarily the property of being godlike is exemplified so there you have it um, Anselm's uh, ontological argument uh, for the existence of God and Gödel's mathematic argument for the existence of God um, now Gödel defined being godlike as having every positive property he left the term positive undefined on purpose Godel proposed that it is understood in an aesthetic and moral sense or alternatively as the opposite of privation. In other words, the absence of necessary qualities in the universe, the opposite of that. Godel warned against interpreting the word positive as being morally or aesthetically good, like having a great advantage or at least disadvantage because um, this would in include negative characteristics instead Godel suggested that the word positive should be interpreted as being perfect in other words purely good without any negative characteristics whatsoever so there you have it the ontological argument examine the evidence and think for yourselves and use the brain that God gave to you.